Okay, so let's uh, let's uh, render a couple of courses here, right? So so presumably this uh, table of courses wants to list the content, right, in a either in a table or a list uh, made up of rows and columns, whatever, right? Let's do it with a with a list. Now because we're going to have a list here, a, a, a list. Um, notice that it's complaining again because uh, we are trying to re return more than one element, right? So let's uh, let's fix that. Let's uh, wrap this element into a, a div with a div right here, right? Okay, and in here let's create a a, a list, right? And in here we might have course one, you know, just a couple of courses in here, course two and three. You know, we have those courses uh, that are in the table, but they're not in the grid. All right. So in the table, notice that we this is a hard coded list. Ideally, we would like to be able to do this dynamically because we you're passing us an array of courses. We'd like to iterate over that. Yep. Yeah? And what we'd like to be able to do is that as we iterate, right, we would like to uh, render you know an li for every single object that we iterate over. Yes. All right. Uh, so how do we, how can we do that? Well, again, since we're going to dynamically do this, we're going to go back to JavaScript. Right now, this is all hard-coded HTML. Well, let's go back to JavaScript. So curly bracket. Now we're in JavaScript. Right? So whatever whatever here uh, I can I calculate will be appended to the rest of the DOM, just like the length over there. Right? Whatever it it uh, it uh, um, evaluated to. Right? It was appended to the rest of the DOM in inline. So same thing here. So uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to take the courses and we're going to iterate over it, right? There's several iterators in JavaScript, right? That, uh, uh, but in particular, we're going to we want one that as it iterates, it accumulates, right? It appends the result as it goes, right? So it so happens that there is a function that does that, the map function. The map function iterates over an array. Or an object too, it, it, and and um, and as it iterates, it calls a function. It calls a function, giving you an instance to each of the elements as you iterate. So this will be each one of the objects. There it is. So it passes me each course as it iterates. Yes. Also, it passes me as a second argument. It passes me. It passes me. Which element is this? Is this the first element? The second? The third? What is it? Passes me the index zero, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, and what you do here is whatever you return from this function, whatever you return from this function, will be the concatenation will be concatenated, accumulated over the iteration. Yes. Uh, so let's iterate and let's return. Let's return the index. Notice that if we return the index, uh, we, we would expect to have concatenated zero, one, two, three, four. Right. Uh, and and that's exactly what we would see, right? The zero, one, two, three, four is appended, right, right at the end of the li, which is not exactly what we want, but just to illustrate, right, that that's exactly what we'd expect, right? We could also be be a little more uh, smart over here, and maybe we can do course, we can we can uh, concatenate the titles, right? The course has a title. Um, wait, no, sorry. Yeah, there it is, the course title, right? And what we'd expect is that these all would be just concatenated, right, at the end of the li. Not quite exactly what we want, uh, but it's very close. Uh, we could just say that we could uh, go back to to, jo to HTML, right? And inside of that HTML, we want to embed JavaScript, right? So this would be an L li. We're going to return an li that would be concatenated. Right, but it's going to contain a, a, a dynamic title in there. See that? So if we if we if we go there, notice that there we go. We have a all through e that are dynamically rendered in there. Everybody good? All right. That means we don't really need these hard coded values over here. Course one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, notice that uh, we're getting some some error messages over here. So let's take a look at the error message. It's saying it's complaining. That the those dynamic elements that we're generating, they're missing the key property, right? They're missing the key property, and and that this goes back to what I was mentioning earlier that React uh, tries to optimize the read and write to the DOM, 
right? So any anything that it dynamically generates, right? It, it, it wants to keep you know and uh, um, you know tabs, right, uh, of, of what it has generated, right? So so to be able to keep track of all of, of all these elements, uh, it's asking me to to add a unique identifier using the key property, meaning it's asking me to do this key. Right, add a property that uniquely identifies this element. Right, we could do, use the index. We could use the index like that. Right, if you do that, if we go back, notice that it does not complain anymore. Yes. Uh, no, no, it's curly bracket. It's evaluated as a as a, as a number. Right, because this is you know like would just evaluate it. Yeah, it will put it in, into quotes. Yes. Uh, all right. So so great. So that that worked fine. Um, and uh, we, we might want to maybe make, uh, make it a little bit easier. Uh, you know, this might be a fairly complex HTML, yes? Uh, so if you want to break it into multiple lines, you can put parentheses in, in, around it, right, so that you can make this a little bit easier to read. Okay, so this might be a fairly complex uh, element. Everybody good? All right.